Hello and welcome back to the channel where once again it's time for another Sega Saturn review. Of course, today we have gone for one of the earliest titles released on the system and at the point of time that it came out was definitely the technically the most impressive game and that is of course Panzer Dragoon which came out in mid-1995. So as the game loads up, you're greeted with a very intricate, detailed FMV video, which was very uncommon, really, especially at the start of the Saturn's life. And it gives you a detailed story of how the main protagonist gains control of the Blue Dragon and is given the quest of stopping the Dark Dragon from reactivating an ancient ruin. Now, if you've not seen Panzer Dragoon before, it's an on-rail shooter. It's a pretty simplistic kind of game, but... It was really released, I think, as a technical show point that the Saturn could deliver 3D games. Because a lot of people were doubting, obviously, the Saturn's 3D capabilities. And people have said it was tacked on and it was primarily a 2D machine. But Prancer Dragoon really did give people something to look at and say, oh, actually, the Saturn can do 3D pretty well. So once the main menu rolls around, you see you've just got the option of starting a new game or heading into options. Options is your standard stuff in terms of changing whether up or down will give you normal or reverse controls in a game like this. That's quite important. The controller settings, pretty simplistic. Shooting, charging up your shots and rotating the camera views. Pretty simplistic stuff. Nothing special here. Sound, balance, music checks. All the standard stuff that you would expect. So like we always do, we're going to talk about what this game looks like, how it plays, how it sounds, and what kind of lifespan you can expect to get from Panzer Dragoon. Now, considering it came out in mid-1995, and perhaps some of those other early 3D Saturn games didn't look particularly good, Panzer Dragoon was, without a doubt, the standout title early on in the Saturn's life. It really does look pretty good for that point in time it's got a fully rotatable camera as well so you can really get you really get the impression that you're in a 3d environment which is something that wasn't you know particularly common back in mid 1995 the dragon doesn't look too bad that the actual environments look pretty good and the great thing is all the levels are completely different looking they're fully individual in the way they look and feel and i really really think that helped the game now the first level gives you a great sense of space whereas some of the other levels are, are really tight and kind of claustrophobic in their feeling which is great because it obviously does give you a lot of variety as well it doesn't have any slowdown really or anything i've never not really noticed any of that i just think the game generally looks pretty good for its, its point in time there's a bit of pop-up here and there which is forgivable for the time period and obviously it's not the most spectacular looking of games if you're talking about how it looks nowadays then yeah it doesn't look great but for the period in time that it came out panzer dragoon was a really decent looking 3d title In terms of gameplay, Panzer Dragoon is pretty simplistic. It's an on-rail shooter, which means you can't really dictate where you're going. You followed a predetermined path. You can move the dragon left to right, up and down, that kind of stuff, but you can't really have any kind of navigation choices yourself. You've got A, B and C, which simply fire your standard projectile. If you hold them, then you'll do a locked-on target shot, and that is it in terms of your artillery. It is really fly around the levels and try and destroy as many things as you can, and then, of course, you get to an end-of-level boss, which will have certain areas that you can target to defeat it. It's pretty much rinse and repeat with every level. There's no variety whatsoever and of course this means the gameplay gets very repetitive very quickly now the game is really short it's only about 40 45 minutes long so you don't get too bored of it you can pick it up and you can blast through it pretty quickly but if you're looking for a game that's going to give you depth and long-term sort of gameplay mechanics that you can master then Panzer Dragoon isn't going to be your cup of tea So moving on to the way the game sounds, and I'd like to think the majority of people would agree with me that the biggest strength of Panzer Dragoon is probably the soundtrack. Some of the music tracks I think are quite memorable and they're really, really good to listen to. We've got some mellow tunes and we've got some more upbeat ones which give the game a bit more variety as well. And they definitely suit the levels that they're intended for. Sound effect wise, it's pretty standard stuff. The sort of shot noises of your weapons and the dragons being hit, that kind of stuff. It's all pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary there. But what I'm gonna do is like any game like this, I'm gonna give you a few samples of the music 
music so you can decide for yourself. In terms of lifespan, Panzer Dragoon doesn't really have much of one, really. It takes about 45 minutes to play through the whole game. There are six standard levels, and there are a final level where you take down the final boss. There's also an additional Episode Zero that you can unlock with a code on the main menu, and it's pretty much a score attack trying to get as big a high score as you can. It's a very repetitive level, and it's just a case of wave after wave of enemies for you to take down. That is it really. There's obviously easy mode, normal mode and hard mode. If you want to challenge yourself to that, you can also unlock an invincibility mode. It's called scenic mode, I believe, where you can just play through the game where you don't use any health. But there isn't really a whole lot. There's no two player. It's not really a game that you're going to come back to over and over again. And really, the only thing really is if you want to improve your sort of like score on each level in terms of your accuracy of taking down as many monsters as possible. That is really it. Probably the lifespan is, is the weakest part of the game in all fairness but it is an early Saturn game and like I said it's pretty much a technical showpiece for the system. So as always we're left with two questions to answer at the end and one of them is is this game worth playing today and if you've never played Panzer Dragoon then yes it's worth a blast it's worth a playthrough 40 45 minutes and it's done you've played it and you've experienced it and you've enjoyed it for what it is a simplistic on rail shooter that was pretty much a technical showpiece like I've said a few times already that's really what it is should you go out and buy it well it's probably going to set you back about 40 45 quid these days for a physical copy so it's probably not really worth it in that regard now of course the other question is does it make it into our top 10 and unfortunately even though it's enjoyable Enjoyable for the time that you play it there really isn't enough here to oost any of those games out of our top 10 I'm afraid to say it's enjoyable but it's really short and there's no additional modes there's no two player anything like that at all so that is really why it doesn't make it into our top 10 are your thoughts different to mine let me know with a comment down below and as always I will be back in the near future with another review on the Saturn goodbye for now